Welcome to ESBC Updates, HCAM's original program updating you on all that's happening with the ESBC. I'm Mike Tarosian, your host. At the ESBC's May 21st meeting, they went over the review draft of the MSBA supplemental submission. Here today with me is Mike Shepard and Rob Nickerson. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank, Thank you, Michael, for having so, us. So, all right. Since that last time we spoke, we had a whole bunch of stuff going on. We had town meeting going on. Yep. We had the town election going on. Okay, everything got voted. You're buying the mm -hmm. Irvine property. Um, and so the land is settled. The land is yep. settled. Uh, except the, the deal's not done. Yep. But it's settled. Right. right. Everything's settled. <laughs> so um, at the last meeting, um, we talked about the schematics. What's the significance of the preferred schematic report that uh, is being submitted to MSBA? The schematic design um, is, is important in that it utilizes the educational plan, which was developed by the superintendent and the principal and their staff, um, so that the building actually fits the plan as opposed to vice versa. Um, the, the design of the building and the schematic um, roughly shows the design of the building, the number of classrooms, the locations of the classrooms, how you get in and out of the building roughly shows the circulation around the building. Um, but the, the, the schematic design, we're now accepted on Tuesday, not Wednesday morning, the MSBA, the School Building Authority, invited us into this schematic design phase. Um, this is a relatively short phase with a lot of work has to be done. Uh, the edu educational plan has been developed um, it's been submitted to the MSBA. Um, the architects are starting to work on the schematic design. Uh, nothing is cast in stone in the schematic design. Um, the, you know, there are uh, parts of it that are subject to change, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a school on the property that best fits the property, but most importantly, a, a school that fits the educational plan of the educators. Um, to give everybody a little bit of update, this, this new phase we're in, this schematic phase, um, in November of 2013, the MSBA invited us to this eligibility period. And then in March of 2014, they invited us into the feasibility uh, uh, period. And this past Wednesday, we're into the schematic period. The next phase, there's seven phases all together, the next phase is actually project funding. Uh, the schematic designs get submitted along with the educational plan to the MSBA and they'll approve it. And then the next phase is the funding phase where they will we'll enter into an agreement in terms of what they'll reimburse and what the potential costs of the building are. And then sometime in the fall, uh, hopefully the selectmen will schedule a special town meeting where the townspeople will get to vote on the project um, and the numbers will be attached to that. I'm, I'm sorry, it's kind of a long explanation. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long one, but it, it's, it's very thorough because, like, like you said, there's a lot of work that has to go into this. So a schematic, just for the people at home, is more like a sketch that is adjusted so they can come up with the final design? Yes. The, you, you can't build the building off the schematic design. The schematic design is pictures and elevations. It has no detail like the structural portion of the building or the electrical or the mechanical. It's more of a, a blueprint for what the final building is going to look like. Um, the important things are the, you know, the space that it, it shows the spaces where they are in relation to one another. Um, and, and it also, the schematic design is not just about the building, but it's about the surroundings and the, the land, the vegetation, the, the, traffic, use, the yeah. use of the wetlands, yep. the traffic, the parking. Will there be trails, things in, like that? Getting out. Okay. All that rolls into the schematic design. And uh, so that hopefully when we present to the special town meeting in the fall, they'll have a really, really good idea of what it, it it'll be roughly what it looks like. So in, in the fall, you'll be presenting a schematic, Absolutely. not into the final design. Yep. Okay. So. Getting all that ready, and you mentioned that you are building it to the educational plan. Do you, what is the educational plan? The, the MSBA, um, you, know, you know, and they do this for every community, as part of the, the submission to get to this phase, is they want to know what the educational plan of the educators is. You know, how, 
how you know the spe special needs pe uh, students they handle, how the how the facility is going to contribute to the kids and the families of the kids o over time, um, and how they do certain things. And once this, the educational plan is submitted, then what they do is they compare that. This is what you said you're going to do. This is what your plan is educationally. And trust me that. They're the educators, yeah, and, yeah, know. And, and the educators of the MSBA know the same thing. So they submit this, the educational plan, and then the schematic design is developed to complement the plan. In other words, it, there'll be nothing in the design that isn't uh, designed to complement the educational plan. Okay. And it's it's not the plan first, and then the edu it's not the schematic design first, and then you figure out what you're going to do educationally, which, fit, which would right? be a lot easier. Right. But <laughs> it isn't the way. They well, do well it. they're constantly. I mean, the school committee and the uh, superintendent constantly are working on the educational That's plan. Right. Absolutely. And so there there is one now. Yeah. Do we know what that is by any chance? What the because I know it's P. Pre-K, K, and one. one. Yep. Do we know any details about the plan itself? I mean, it may, I'm, I'm uh, not familiar with there's them. A, there's a rough draft of the educational plan. Right. We we've, we've reviewed the draft at the ESBC, at uh, the last meeting. ESBC meeting. Yeah. Um, probably the best way to, to learn more about what that plan was would be to go back on into the HCAM archives and, and watch that meeting where we reviewed it, because I don't think that the actual plan itself, they're, they're still kind of tweaking a few things, and then we'll make it publicly so available. So they, they gave more at that meeting than right. what yeah. is on paper. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So as soon as, as soon as we have a soft copy that we can put out on our Facebook page and on our website, then we'll do that. And, and, and ideally, that'll be before we have our uh, our forum next week. Excellent. So speaking about the upcoming forum, that's a great good meeting. Good segues. You know, <laughs> I might as well put these questions away. Thank you. Uh, so yes, tell me uh, what's going on. We have a forum on the 15th? On the 15th, June 15th at the middle school library um, from 7 to 8 30. And yeah. this one is, so we've had, we've had, I think, three so far. Yes. And they've almost all been, you know, site-related, land-related, you know, where's it going to be? We're really starting to get into the, what I think is one of the really exciting part, parts of the project is showing what the building could look like. And I think a lot of people, you know, now that they know that there's this big green area that we're going to put a school in, they want to know, well, what is this school going to actually look like? Right. Um, on our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Hopkinton ESBC, and on HopkintonSchoolProject.com, we've already shared some of the initial renderings that, that have been made available. So we have, and obviously it's not easy to see here, but we have uh, you know, sort of what it would look like from a, from a south-facing aerial view. Yep. We also have other ones that show what it looks like from the north. Um, but these are what the architects have come up with based on what they know of the educational plan. Um, and the really interesting thing about this is, is that you know, it's, it's easy to look at this and you can say a bunch of things. You can say, wow, this building looks really cool, or you can say, I don't understand why they did this, that, or the other. But when you match this up with the education plan, it actually speaks to why they do certain things. Right. Um, and architecturally, even some things that aren't in the education plan, you know, like I was curious, for example, about why, well, you know, there, there's this opportunity for a big long hallway in one of these wings, but they broke it up. They staggered it. Why did they do that? Well, there's actually a reason why they do that for elementary schools, and it has to do with giving kids, you know, kind of smaller pockets to work in and not having these big long expansive hallways in front of them. So, I think if people come to the forum with with questions, you know, either similar to that or they're curious about why certain elements of this building are designed the way they are. The forum is a great place to come and have those questions answered because I know that, you know, as a member of the committee, listening to the, to the uh, center school principal Lauren Dubow and uh, Superintendent McLeod talk about, uh, along with the architects, you know, why they made certain architectural decisions, it, it's fascinating um, as to as to how all this builds in to, to, to make the school. So aside from the uh, the renderings that the architects have done that we'll be sharing at that meeting, we also have the floor plans. So there's the, you know, the first floor, the second floor. Um, and what these are showing is proximity, and Mike mentioned some of this, proximity of classrooms to, to, to different areas in the school, proximity of stairs to things like the library and why that's important in the school. Um, you know, what the, what the use of the cafeteria would be, what the use of the gymnasium would be aside from their, their standard purposes. Um, but these floor plans, we'll be discussing those at the forum too. Um, and the architects have also given us a look at what it would look like inside the classrooms themselves. 
Um, and again, these are draft. Um, you know, they're, 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 there's wiggle room here. We want sure. community feedback on this, right. which is why we're having the forum. So that's why it's so important that people um, come and, and you know, and, and take a look and, and provide their voices. Um, but you know, thing, things like you know, the, you know, I was talking about the staggered hallways. There it is, yeah. showing how it kind of compartmentalizes some of these rooms. Um, but you know, even what some of the layouts of the classrooms would be, the sizes of the windows, things like that, how that all plays into a better education model for elementary school students. Um, all of that we're going to be going over. Um, we'll be going over the education plan in detail. I know that um, Kathy McLeod, Dr. McLeod, and uh, Principal Dubow are going to, I think, you know, kind of lead off the discussion just talking just about the education plan so that when the architects take over in the, in the next portion of the forum, a lot of what they're talking about will make more sense. And hopefully, people will be able to kind of answer some of the why questions in their own heads before, you know, while they're looking at the, at the design. So um, I'm really excited about, I've, I've been excited about all of them, but I'm really excited about this one because I think actually getting the image of what this thing is going to be in front of people is right. going to be enormous. And I, think, sure. and I think people are going to be excited. I think they're going to be pleased that we're approaching it the way we are, you know, through the MSBA and through the education plan and, and with the architects. It, it, it's all kind of coming together nicely. Oh, Mike, i got to ask you this question because I, I still hear this today. I already know the answer, but I need to explain <laughs> the answer. I'm worried. Why can't you just build another Hopkins school and build it on that site? Why, why can't you just build another high school site and build it on that site? Can you explain? The, 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 every age group has different uh, parameters. For example, this elementary school, uh, first grade, the kindergarten rooms, they're all going to have toilet facilities within the rooms, as opposed to what you have at Hopkins. It's much more conventional because that was designed for a four or five uh, age group. Sure. Um, and everything is different in terms of you know how you get in, how you get out. Uh, the terrain is different. Um, it would be nice just to pull a plan out. In fact, the MSBA does have plans for, and they give you extra credit, meaning more <laughs> money for. They have no plans for a K one school. They have. Right. K through five, they have it, but and there's no stock plans. Um, they started that program probably, you know, seven or eight years ago about using the stock plan, and and the, and we found over time that what people do or towns do is they modify the stock plan to the point where it's not the same plan anymore right. anyway, right. because every educational plan is different. There is not a statewide educational plan for K one. This is something that's developed locally because they want the local. Um, uh, school authorities to, to, to develop. So Hopkins was built for that age group students on that site. This is built for this age group students on, on this site. And I might also add that the, the architect asked us um, several weeks ago what some of our, our major concerns that would go into a schematic design. And, and one of the ones that was brought up was obviously security. All parents mm. are worried about security. Absolutely. And, and that, without listening to these in any particular order, security always rises to the top on the whole, the whole thing. Again, Hopkins, I was on that building committee probably, if somebody told me it was 15 years ago, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But <laughs> that wasn't as big a deal as it is today, as we all know. Exactly. Also, we want them to, to build some kind of timely design. The, the, the existing center school is, is, of course, look like that forever. We all treasure it. We all value it. It's 85 plus years old, and it still looks great. But we're in a school that, at least 50 years from now, is still going to look great. Not necessarily like the Senate School, but something that's going to, you know, withstand the period of time and, and still look good in 50 years. That's I, our goal. I, I think I'm going to try to mimic our latest schools as far as a, from an exterior, like brickwork or. Well, Colors again, of again brick the, we haven't even discussed the extra. Yeah, right? that the, the, uh, but, but what we want to do is use materials that are sustainable, that we won't have to replace in 10 years or fix, that e can be easily maintained. Yeah. That, that was some of the other guidelines we gave them. Um, the, um, they're, they're architects. This is, this is what they do. But it, it'll be a design that I suspect that if we were to come back or I was to come back in, in 50 years, I'd say this, the, the building still looks good. And, and yeah. you know, hopefully it'll retain some of that, that value. Uh, we want them to minimize the maintenance issues. We, we don't want to have them design something into it that's going to be an outrageous headache for the maintenance folks and therefore sure. an expense for the school. We want it to be sustainable in terms of energy efficient, uh, the water use, the electrical use, the, the gas, you know, it, wa it wants to be an energy efficient structure. 
One of the more important things that we mentioned at the original town meeting when we started all this is we want to have it designed so that it can accommodate an addition, additional classrooms if we have to. Mm -hmm. So the architects have looked at that and said, these are where the additional classroom would go if we were going to add them. Um, so that's important. We're not going to go back to square one. Um, so, we, so we're not going to see uh, in 10 years trailers in the parking lot. Ideally not. Okay. No. Yeah. The, I, ideally <laughs> I, think, I think we've seen I, enough of that. Ideally, ideally the, yeah. the addition will be a seamless addition if there is one. Right. Um, and <clears throat> the existing uh, core facilities will be able to support it. The core facilities are large enough to be able to do that. Um, we also, it was important to us that they utilize the natural features of the site. A lot of people haven't had the opportunity to get in there, but once you do and once you find, you find out how beautiful it is. And, and there are a lot of wetland issues. We're going to be dealing with conservation, but those could work to our advantage as well as far as the education for the children. And part of the educational plan uh, delves into that. Um, so. That was, that was pretty much it. They, and this schematic that the people are going to see, I, I, I think they're posted, some, these posted somewhere? They're all online, yep. Yeah, they're all online and you can see them, but they were, those issues, those items were used to come up with this. And right. That's what the committee And this isn't set in stone because th this is why we're meeting on the 15th yep. to right. work, work out some of the bugs. And yet, the other thing, before I forget, because it's relatively important, you know, other than this paperwork and the architects working, um, there are engineers out there at the site now as well. Right. They're, they're doing the, the, uh, the plan of the land, There's the actual survey of the bounds of the land. The, they're actually uh, annotating where the wetlands are, because all that is going to contribute to the final plan the and the and final location. Yep. And ultimately the cost, but it has to be done. So we're not waiting. You know, we're doing that right now. That was all part of the feasibility money right. that was provided back at town meeting two years ago. Um, so we'll be in good shape yeah. and ready to hit the road. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's also important to note that this isn't, this isn't a project, and I think we've said this a bunch of times too, but this isn't a project that's just for parents of children who are gonna be right. using this elementary school or parents of children who are currently at center school. There's more to this building and more to this site than just what happens on Monday through Friday, um, you know, between you know eight and two p.m. Um, the way that they're architecting this school is in such a way that if we did have to use it for other things, um, you know, for community meetings, for things, you know, events in the gymnasium. I mean, we have these kind of things happen all the time at Center School now sure. and Hopkins. There's always these extracurricular things that that go on. The uh, the building is being architected in a way so that. It's convenient and easy for people to get in and out without having to traverse the entirety of the school, go through classrooms and things like that. So it can kind of function as a community center as well. Um, obviously, it's not going to be its primary purpose, but um, but this is. I think this is. It's important to note that this will be something for the community, not just for a certain segment of the sure. community. Um, so you know, obviously, it's something that we want everyone to be bought into, and we, we always Absolutely. talk about. We always talk about bringing people along with us on this ride, and we're, we're, we're hoping that we can get more than just the folks who have the young kids along with us on this right. ride because, you know, that their voice is important, too, and we want to make sure we hear it. So it's important that we get that kind of feedback at the forum it's as nice well. It's nice to see at these forums, especially the past ones that we've been to, that you've had the public there. And when I, I'll use the, the non-school using public yeah. have been at these meetings. Uh, because they know this is their tax dollars, right? And they want to see something beautiful. They want to see something that's going to last, and they want to stretch their dollar. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. to expand on what what Rob said, the, just the proximity of this school to uh, EMC Park. Uh, the architects have, at, at a minimum, they have a walking trail that will get you from EMC Park to the school and vice versa. We've all been up to the park um, as parents or grandparents. Uh, uh, at Little League games and had no place to park and and, sure. and this the school facility would be a place to park and provide that and there'll be communication between the school uh, some you'll get there sometime somewhere around or through where the the uh, the little recreation area is for the kids right. um, but they're relatively close so there'll be that kind of communication uh, which will help yep. as well both ways that's excellent that's good to hear anything else we need to add as we wrap up uh, it, it, you know, we're, we're all on the committee really excited to help out the community and, and we're all on the job. committee.
to, on the committee are, are thankful to HCAMP to provide us this opportunity <laughs> to Absolutely. update everybody. And, well, that's what we're here for. And even though we probably won't have snow at the meeting <laughs> on uh, the 15th yeah, like one. everybody <laughs> used to, I hope everybody comes out. It's, it, we're in a really exciting phase and a phase that moves really, really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, Let's town meeting is going to be on us in no time. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, again, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. And to catch up with everything ESBC ahead of their community forum for early childhood education plan and building design direction on Monday, June 15th at uh, 7 p.m. at the Middle School Library, visit their website at hopkinsschoolproject.com or check out their Facebook page at Hopkins ESBC. You can also watch all the ESBC's meetings and past episodes of ESBC Update anytime by visiting hcam.tv. On behalf of the Elementary School Board Building Committee and everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mike Terosian, and thank you for watching this episode of ESBC Update.